Good afternoon, everybody. Today is Monday, August 1st, 2011. Let's take a look at these markets here. Today's uh, Monday analysis is brought to you by Realtek. Realtek.com is the trading software and analysis tool that I use for all my trades. It's a lot more than what I show uh, each time I go through here. I would encourage you to go to Realtek.com and uh, take a trial to it or look at some of the brokers that provide the uh, Realtek uh, platform. But let's take a look at this market here. We've got the uh, S&P 500 daily uh, chart here. And I've got a 50, 100, 150, and finally the 200 day moving average. The 200 day moving average, we just managed to close above here at the end of the day. Uh, the simple moving average right now is 128.70. Uh, and you can see we closed eight pennies above that. So we've been testing this 200 day moving average. This is the second time in about six weeks that we've been down to it. Now, obviously, last time we built a little bit of a base and had that huge rally, but we're stuck below that 130 level. And uh, today's action. Was, was pretty crazy when you look at it in terms of the way it gapped up and then sold off so strong and here at the end of the day barely making it right up to about that uh, daily uh, uh, volume weighted average price level. I was talking to someone I respect a lot over the weekend and they were telling me how obvious uh, Friday's um, action was that it was going to sell off and then and then rally and you know, I don't think that there's anything obvious about anything that's going on in this market right now I think we have to just stick to uh, what we know here on the intermediate term time frame first and foremost which is uh, what we're looking at right now here on this 10 minute time frame and we had been observing last week the lower highs and lower lows we broke important support uh, first at that 133 level and then down of course at that 130 area well that 130 area it we can see uh, here's that 133 level first and the 130 level you know we barely we got above it briefly here today and I was saying in uh, the video Friday I wouldn't expect us to get up uh, beyond about 131 and a half if we saw any type of rally uh, but that that initial uh, um, rally here you can see the market opened up and just really sold off strong in that first half hour of the day and right now we've got a market that's that's really indecisive here and it has been for much of this year uh, indecisive that is we've we've had a lot of volatility but we're only up really a couple percentage points in the S&P 500 uh, year to date and you know the main range that we're in basically uh, is been about 128 to 136 now that doesn't that's not the encompassing range but that's the, the majority of where this trading has occurred. And again, as, as we, would, we had mentioned uh, on, on Friday, I think that, you know, the fact that the 50-day moving average is down through the 100, the 50 is down through the 150-day moving average, this is the, the result of and what further confirms that we're in this more neutral or choppy uh, range. Now, we don't know whether this is distribution before a decline uh, and we break down or whether this is going to be uh, just a, a sideways correction through time or maybe a little bit deeper correction uh, price wise but we came down and, and did touch really this uh, um, longer term trend line as well off of the 2009 lows so we have that level and of course this 125 and a half 126 area that's been really the horizontal support for this market when you look at it from this uh, perspective it really looks like a shoulder ahead and another shoulder here and we had been talking about an inverted head and shoulders pattern uh, on the uh, on, on the shorter term time frame as well that is on this daily time frame so we've got patterns within patterns which one do you believe is is what you really what it comes down to do you go off this bigger pattern on the weekly time frame do you look at that daily pattern and say well it never it never accomplished breaking above that inverted head and shoulders pattern so that was a failed pattern anyways I, I think what the market is really telling us more than anything is whether try, they're trying to uh, put a label on what type of uh, pattern uh, the market may be falling under at any given time is that we want to listen to the action of the market on the intermediate term time frame and, and remember that while we're making lower highs and lower lows below a declining five-day moving average the market remains guilty till proven innocent on the uh, you know the short to intermediate term time frame here this is about two weeks if this time frame begins to turn bullish again then we want to see that confirmed on the daily time frame and that wouldn't really happen here we're still in this big giant mess so uh, I think that it's going to continue to be choppy action for a while here unfortunately the Nasdaq was down 27 cents you can see that this $57 level we've been talking about came close to being tested today and the interesting thing is not only is it the 50 day moving average but we also see that blue uh, what is a 100 day and the green 
150 day moving average so we have a cluster of these three moving averages here 50 100 and 150 uh, or when you're looking at a weekly chart you would see the 10 20 and 30 week moving average we're still uh, comfortably above the trend line uh, from 2009 lows in, in the Nasdaq that would bring us down really to about 55 and 57 of course is going to be an important level now to get back to any type of bullish uh, action to the upside I think 59 and a half is what we're really gonna have to uh, uh, recover back above but again while we're below a declining five-day moving average you want to look at this and you know sometimes you get lucky if you buy ahead of that with this gap but there's still plenty of meat on the bone uh, to go after if you get a, a, that sort of uh, a gap uh, higher once again but you know this market is showing a lot of indecision as well and the Russell 2000 has been uh, relatively weaker in and, and this is of course the, the market I've been talking we've been talking about how it had hit all-time highs back in April and when we take take a look at the trend line here we're still comfortably above that that would get us down maybe to that 75 level and I think that would pre create a pretty good panic because we would first break that big 77 level and then a further continuation down towards 77 uh, 75 rather would, would really get a lot of people's attention I think so uh, those are some levels to keep an eye on we've got in here the same thing we've got a decline five-day moving average I don't know who who the people are that buy on gaps higher like this it just doesn't make sense you have to wait let it settle in see if the market can initially you know come back down and then you know what you're looking for for a buy in in this type of environment is something that looks like this and we would see the price action come down back you know back up above volume weighted average price and then be able to hold it that would be you know where we would want to buy with a stop below the low but instead we stay below that declining volume weighted average price on the one minute chart all day we were also below the declining uh, five day moving average so this is not the environment obviously that uh, favors longs although interestingly enough we did finish uh, today with 1600 advancers and 1400 five decliners so the semiconductors were up a penny still kind of fighting with that 32 level and this is a big level in here this 32 if if we really lose this with uh, vigor then I think that's going to uh, you know bring us down to at least uh, the 30 and a half or so area and that would create some bigger panic with it or bigger sell-off rather not necessarily panic but bigger reason for concern amongst a lot of people in this market so let's see how this uh, you know the semiconductors can do with about 30 to 70 to 32 90 if we can't get up through that again and, and we see lower highs and lower lows obviously we're going to continue lower and the financials don't help a bit either big red uh, candle in there today uh, there you know the best case you could make here is that they're trying to turn sideways trying to turn neutral it looks a lot like you know the the case that people were making back here uh, back in May and then even over here uh, in in uh, in June and July that the, the, the US dollar was making a bottom to me there's no evidence of a bottom in here uh, in the US dollar things can change quickly things do change quickly so always keep your guard up and uh, be prepared for whatever the market's going to throw at you and you, you are you, you prepare yourself by keeping a very strong defense